Hi, everyone. Welcome back to a new episode of Emerging Brands Podcast with Kelly Bennett. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm a New York City-based brand strategist. So each week, I talk to people who are founders, brand builders, who are behind the scenes building really cool brands. I connected with Sneha Segal on uh, LinkedIn. And when we talked about what she's building with geeks and experts, I absolutely wanted to have her on the podcast. So thank you so much for being here. Hey, Kelly, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. I think we have a lot of interesting nuggets to share here. So excited to kick it off. Absolutely. So for anyone who is new to geeks and experts, first of all, I love the name. <laughs> it, it really gives you a feel and a vibe right off the bat. What is the story behind your brand? Um, what is the story of how it came to be? Yeah, absolutely. I love sharing this because uh, I've had a career in marketing and PR for over a decade, and it's always been with early stage companies, small and medium businesses, or the startup stage, because I kind of like the scrappiness or, um, you know, the grit that comes with doing multiple things. Uh, and specifically when it comes to PR, I noticed that a lot of early stage companies struggle with identifying, you know, do they really need that extra PR expertise? Should they hire somebody full-time or spend, you know, five figures per month to, to give it to an agency? That's where I found that maybe there's a sweet spot here in this niche of hiring fractional PR experts for three months, six months, depending on what your needs are. Because of course, we all know that at the early stage, your budgets are limited. So you, you know, maybe you have a funding round, uh, maybe you have a new product feature that's being launched. So that's where the idea of Geeks and Experts was born to just get PR specialists from as, as specific an industry you're looking at. I'm talking pet tech, I'm talking fintech, I'm talking true crime, I'm talking literally across the spectrum, um, you know, given given those are the specialists that you need to work with when you're looking at a specific industry. I love how you found a niche in startups and early stage brands, emerging brands, brands that are working on a conscious budget <laughs> in those earlier years who really need the PR and and really could benefit of making their brand legit and really building their business, but not sure how to make that work with the budget that they have. So what was the early days of how you started building Geeks and Experts? Like, was it a matchmaking service almost? Or like, walk us through like how you started uh, coming up with the concept, like the actual business around it. Yeah, it was a lot of it honestly was following the noise or the signals. I like to call it that because uh, when you're starting out as a founder, I think you want to boil the ocean and you think you can be everybody for everyone. And that was the mistake that I made as well. And by virtue of just the kind of requests we were getting from some of our clients, we figured that PR was the the role that they were kind of, there's a lot of mystery or mystique around how do I get featured? How do I land, you know, media placements? Uh, do I really need to pay to come on, you know, this podcast or to pay to be on any kind of speaking engagement? And I'm a strong advocate for earned media. And even before you think of coming to geeks and experts, I would be an advocate for sharing tools that you have at your disposal without spending any money. I mean, there are free proactive pitching, reactive pitching tools out there like Harrow, uh, and we can dive deeper into this because I think maybe yeah, a lot of founders I think would, that would, would be have. Great. Yeah. So, you know, there's Hiro, which is called Help a Reporter Out. And mm -hmm. that is basically a tool that sends out three emails per day about journalists who are looking for source requests, um, you know, on any specific topic. So you have to respond to that request saying, I'm an expert, I'm a source, I'm willing to give you, um, you know, maybe two, three lines and why you're credible enough to be that person to give that uh, information to them. And that is how I have landed some, you know, placements for myself. So even before you think of hiring somebody as a freelancer, there are things you can do. Um, build those relationships with journalists and bloggers, uh, build that personal brand, maybe writing. If you enjoy sharing your founder journey, there are a lot of founders who would love to learn about that journey. So there are a lot of tools you can use early on. But the reason we started Geeks and Experts was because we were working with companies that were a little further along. So this is right. founders have already established, maybe they've raised a seed round. 
Uh, they're going on to raise their Series A round. So these were the companies where we were seeing a lot of impact by getting an expert because now you're you want to change the gears a bit, and that's the interesting part about being on this founder journey, right? You keep having to amp it up depending on where you're at. Right. And that's what we were talking about just on our own personal journeys before we hit record on the podcast. It's always evolving and it's always reshifting your mindset and reshifting your systems and your ops and how you do your own outreach and who you work with at certain times, because that's how you build a sustainable brand in the long run, right? And I think PR is one of those really interesting pieces that is that consistent um, outreach that needs to happen to keep your brand relative. It's not a one and done thing, I love right? that you said that. Uh-huh. It, it, it's true. And just building brands, like you could get really great branding done and have that mm-hmm. probably for many, many years. But PR and then the intersection of content, marketing, you constantly need to be putting yourself out there. So what are you doing differently in this space of PR? Because there's lots of different schools of thought. Um, and I, I really like how you talked about pitching yourself and getting that going. But what are you really wanting to do differently in this space uh, yeah. with uh, geeks and experts? So what a lot of clients like to call us is the slow fashion version of the gig economy or like the sustainable uh, version of it. Because obviously, like you clearly pointed out, you know, PR is not a cookie cutter system. I mean, you can't have uh, the same strategy at different stages of your company or even for different verticals. Um, so the re- what we try to different here is to make sure that the values are aligned when we're, you know, doing that sort of matchmaking. Uh, right. So think of it like a very, you know, upscale or very niche focused uh, freelancer website where you are going to find the PR specialist that you're looking for. And value alignment is something that is at the core of what we're building. Uh, because a lot of projects, when you hire fractional talent, they fall through because there's no value alignment. Uh, and in right. PR, we can have a client coming in saying, I want to be on the front cover of this top tier outlet. Well, but why do you want to be there? You know, what are your objectives? What are the metrics? So uh, clearly defining that is where we do a very, uh, you know, strict onboarding call with the client. Then we do an introductory call with the PR specialist just to make sure that even uh, the client is educated, uh, which I think a lot of people, you know, don't take that extra effort to educate the client or update them about, hey, this is a strategy that will work for you now. And then in three months, we can change the strategy depending on where you are at then. Uh, So that is one part of it. And the second part of it, just something that I feel strongly about being a woman founder, being an immigrant myself is is focusing on those minority communities, telling the stories of the founders, which often don't get the media visibility that, you know, they they deserve or that they don't know how to get there. Um, So that's another core focus that we want to, you know, specialize in. I really appreciate you saying that because that's I think a really interesting piece that you're doing is demystifying and also making it feel more doable. And once someone can wrap their head around like, okay, this is possible, they're much more likely to take that next step in putting themselves out there in whatever capacity that looks like in the stage of their business and brand. So I love how you are helping close that gap to make it feel more obtainable. Yeah, exactly. It gives a founder so much more confidence. Exactly. And I think uh, that's an approach that I think most people are leaning towards now is every people is a people business, no matter what you're talking about. Because at the end of the day, even if a client is not ready to take on my services right now, in six months, maybe they've raised around and now they're looking for somebody who can do some kind of PR uh, strategy for them, you know, to 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 get those placements about their raise, uh, or to even be pre-raised when they're wanting to attract those investors. So I think, um, you know, guiding them, helping them, being with them on that journey, building that long-term relationship is the way I like to approach it. Uh, because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that they get value somehow from you. Because word of mouth is is the best strategy, right? You want to uh, build that relationship that people can go out there and say that, hey, you know, we've got so much information from here uh, that we actually trust uh, this brand to help us go to the next level. Absolutely. What has been your strategy to start cultivating those new relationships or to build those client relationships? Maybe looking back on the earlier days when you were starting out and you're like, I have this idea. Was it reaching out to industry contacts you already had? Was it sharing information on LinkedIn? Because that's how we connected. Like, I would love to hear 
your strategy of how you got your name out there and how you've been really building this? Yeah, I think in retrospect, when you look back, it's just something that gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling mm -hmm. uh, because it, it does when you're doing those things. I was just talking to another founder friend yesterday and when you're in, in the midst of it, you don't realize what's moving the needle. But I think when you look back, you realize it's actually the small things. So to, you know, one of your earlier questions also about like, what made you scale it? I, it was literally the small things. It was giving first. It was being, I love being a connector. I mean, I, I am a strong advocate for just, if I think two people would, would have a great relationship and I don't have to get anything out of it, if it's like, you know, something that would just help them um, get a customer discovery interview done or maybe connect with an investor. That is the way I like to get those uh, you know, connections. And I don't like to call them connections because I think when you take the work out of networking, that's when it actually becomes fun. So right. I would say like putting myself out there physically, you know, in in-person events, but also URL. So I call it the IRL URL balance uh, because you have to make the most of, you know, going that extra mile uh, to be a present at an event, to be a connector. So I would say that was just one of those was give first. Uh, the second one would be, you know, a lot of the knowledge sharing. So I love writing. So I write a lot on Medium. I write for a couple of different publications uh, and sharing the founder journey has actually been coming. It's very easy, right? Because literally I'm almost journaling what I'm going through as a founder. And then I have few more founders who are, you know, maybe a few steps uh, at, at, at another part of their journey. And they're looking at me and saying, oh, hey, you reached here. Like, how did you, you know, get that first client? How did you break revenue? How did you build that trust? Or even something as simple as how do I get contracts? Do I need to um, you know, get a lawyer to to build this whole uh, terms and conditions on my website. So there are a lot of things that, uh, you know, we don't realize we we struggle with. But when you see somebody else talking about it, it kind of rings a bell. So those were a lot of the elements that I mentioned. So yeah, give first, uh, you know, be be open to sharing your knowledge and then just be present. I mean, as much as you can. I Totally agree with you. Has there been any platforms in particular or any events in particular that you feel was the most impactful of getting your name out there and building those relationships? Yeah, I would say, uh, of course, LinkedIn has to be one at the top. I mean, I... Uh, since I'm not I'm not from New York, I moved here about six years ago. Uh, I utilized different platforms and uh, you know built that network. So it was through you know LinkedIn connections, but also my you know alumni from my business school, from uh, my college. Uh, those were some of the networks, and then through friends of friends, right? I mean, uh, as a founder, you you kind of have to have that that thick skin to not be afraid to ask because what's the worst? I mean, somebody's not somebody's gonna say no, big deal. You know, if you want to make that introduction, go out there and ask for it. I mean, uh, you know, you won't know till you don't ask. So whether it's asking for advice, whether it's asking for a connection or an introduction, you know just ask. Uh, there's no harm in doing that. So uh, building that connection was the way I started. Uh, the other platforms I would recommend are just finding people in your in your network who would be those uh, maybe, you know, the hubs for building that network. So for example, in New York, we have a lot of different founder communities, maybe some that are focused specifically, you know, on women founders, some of them that are focused on uh, a niche, or maybe some of them are focused on immigrant founders. So I think it would be identifying who are those two or three people that, uh, you know, would be maybe a great person to know and connect with and build that rapport with down the line? Uh, so those are some of the platforms. And for writing, I'm a big fan of Medium. I do a lot of my writing there because it's just you don't have to worry about, you know, get, getting an audience into a new blog. So you have all your posts out there and people can just read and connect and you can write about multiple topics because as a founder, I write about everything from how I manage my, you know, work-life balance to how I'm getting that first sale or how I'm uh, reading an interesting book on on the founder journey or just something new that I learned. So those are some of the different platforms I would urge people to, you know, just increase your luck surface area, just like sprinkle, sprinkle things online. I think that's a really solid, tangible piece of advice because so many founders, and I'm speaking for myself too, I recently had to give myself my own pep talk of like, it's better just to start putting stuff out there versus overthinking how you're going to put it all out there, right? And like overthinking how it all looks and making sure it's all perfect. Once you just start doing it, you'll find the avenues and paths of like least resistance, right? The things that are mm -hmm. really working, you find that out by doing. 
And again, it was a piece of advice I had to remind myself very recently of like, just start putting it back out there. Like you've been doing good, but if you really want to get to this next level, it's going to require you to do different things, right? Like we said, it's always evolving. So I think uh, your advice is really solid, tangible, practical. And it also speaks to your expertise of PR because you see and know the power of putting yourself out there, putting your story out there, right? Like you're able to grow a incredible business by getting yourself known and doing it in a way that feels authentic to you. And I love that you said that because I think you also realize what is not working. And so you're not wasting your energy and resources because as a founder, there's only so much time you have. And so if you think that this is kind of a leaky bucket or this is really not moving the needle for me, Great. You've identified that you've moved on. And that applies even to identifying your first customer. I mean, as an emerging brand, as an emerging startup, I know that that is also one of the toughest parts is just knowing who is going to pay for my product. And I've been there. Like my product was very different, you know, about a year, year and a half ago. Um, We were targeting a very different audience. Our price points were so different. But now when I look back, if I hadn't actually gone down that path, I wouldn't have known that this is the audience that I'm working with now and that they are the ones who are willing to pay because somebody who says they're willing to pay and actually pays are two different things. (laughs) Agreed. (laughs) Absolutely agree. And I always tell people like, don't negotiate with yourself, actually get feedback. Because I think that very often founders negotiate in our own heads of like, well, they won't buy it or maybe this or maybe that. I'm like, you don't know. You have to get data, right? And you get that data by putting it out there and actually hearing who's buying from you and talking yes. to them. Then you're able to make a much better decision moving forward. Not and get data from the yeah, in your and, own head. And from, from somebody who's not like a friend or, you know, your mom. Right. Or, I mean, the book, right. the mom test, right? I'm sure you've heard of it. And I mean, that's one of my favorite go-to books in, in terms of talking about customer discovery because- my mom loves all my ideas. My mom loves all, all the blogs that I put out there. And that's great. I love it. But at the end of the day, like she's she's one person and I need to go and find, you know, 100 other, so to say, moms who will actually be paying for the product. So totally. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's I've, a really had, good I've had founders tell me like, well, my best friend said that he wouldn't buy my product. And I said, well, is your best friend your target market? And she said, no. I said, okay, well, love your best friend. But I'm sorry, his his feedback is irrelevant. Like, this is not who you're selling to. They're not in the market for what you're selling. I don't know why you're putting this so much weight into this one person's opinion, right? And I think what you're speaking to is like really being clear on who you're collecting feedback from and mm-hmm. who you're listening to in order to really grow your business. Yeah, exactly. And I think it applies uh, in so many different ways as well, right? Like when you're, when you, decide that your customer is somebody else, you have to find different avenues to reach them. It's not going to be the same channel. For some people, it might be LinkedIn. For some people, maybe it's TikTok. So uh, until you don't even know where your customer is sitting, it's pointless to even go out on different channels. So uh, the minute you start, you know, reasoning out or deductive uh, kind of reasoning and removing elimination of who's not a fit, uh, it already helps streamline those, those avenues as well. Absolutely. I think also you brought up a good point of different social channels. I speak to so many founders who are like, oh, social media hasn't worked yet. And it's like the biggest red flag right now. I'm like, okay, wait, that's a really big assumption to make. You're literally saying that any sort of communication that you're sharing your story and content isn't resonating with people. That's a bigger problem. It's not social media. So I would love to hear from a, a from your perspective in PR, the importance of finding a channel that works for you or finding the storylines that really resonate with people just to maybe help them change their perspective of re-looking at social and re-looking at how they're sharing uh, their brand. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think the, the best place to start is seeing what is a low hanging fruit right now for where you're at. 
Uh, so think of it, maybe podcasts as one, right? You want to get yourself out there. You want to make connections. So this is right. you and me, you know, literally building that relationship, but also having the synergy of connecting with both our audiences. Right. Um, so, you know, think of what is the low hanging fruit and where your audience is. So for us, the audience is on LinkedIn because we're working with startups and scale ups. So a lot of the founders, a lot of the CMOs that we work with are present on this platform. Now, Maybe they won't consume the content um, that that we're putting out, but they're definitely engaging with uh, when we share it. You know that there's a slight right. difference in that because I, I, you know, I talked to a couple of founders who are like, "Oh, but you know, I don't know if I really have a lot to say. What will I go on a podcast and talk about?" It's not about what you're going to necessarily talk about. It's the fact that you're putting yourself out there, and a potential customer notices uh, maybe through you or via somebody else that this person is talking about their journey, they're putting themselves out there. It just builds builds that credibility and trust, which I think early on is so important because absolutely if somebody doesn't know you, if they don't, if they have never heard of you, if what you're doing is kind of um, you know, something that they are a little unsure of whether they need or not, uh, by by doing this, you're just nudging them slightly. So uh, when you're deciding which channels work, I think it's about just seeing those metrics uh, and then get feedback, right? I mean um, think back, go back a few steps and say, okay, I invested so much time in all of these different channels. Uh, what are my analytics showing? I mean, look, look back there, go to the drawing board and see, okay, I'm just going to double down in this avenue and scrap out, you know, maybe it's TikTok or maybe it's Instagram that wasn't effective. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, a lot of trial and error, I guess. I agree with you. And I think that it's giving yourself actual data and not making sweeping assumptions because you made one post and it didn't go viral or you worked maybe with one publicist and it didn't really go anywhere well try a new path of PR right and I and I think that that's a really big piece of the conversation for founders especially even when they're when I like how you said to scale up right uh startups and scale ups mm -hmm. uh when you're in that scale up you're gonna have to try new things and you're going to have to try different paths. So I, I really love how your business is meeting people in that journey and saying, okay, cool. This is where you want to go now. Here's your new path. And here's how we're going to do this outreach at this juncture of where you are and where yeah. you want to be. So I, exactly. I really appreciate and that. Actually, when it, when it, you know, just using the analogy of even when you're doing PR, you do have reactive pitching, which is when a journalist is actively looking for a source. But then you also have proactive pitching where you're trying multiple angles. So if your company is, let's say, a fintech product, which helps a company save money by, you know, maybe uh, just increasing their, their top line or reducing some of their costs, your pitch angle can change depending on where the industry is. If companies are, you know, we're in the midst of a lot of layoffs, that is that is an angle that you are, you know, kind of pitching towards that that you know, validating that your company actually helps companies save money. Um, at the same time, down the line, maybe something could change. And then you're you're pitching something completely different. You're talking about how the fundraising environment is getting better and companies, investors are looking for companies that reduce that churn or that reduce their overheads. That's a new angle that you're pitching. Right. So at every stage, you're trying different pitches uh, because it's not always going to be newsworthy. You have to make it uh, something that's relevant. Yes. I'm going to send this to probably every client and every person <laughs> that I've ever worked with and be like, listen, <laughs> yeah. this is how I want you to think about PR because this will help reset the mindset behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and I love how you frame it as far as being proactive and finding those different angles at those different stages in those different conversations with where culture is and where conversations are. Um, yeah. It's always evolving and ever changing. And it just gives you growing opportunities to be a part of it. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, take the example is. of, you know, now we're all talking about women's uh, International Women's Day. And a few weeks right. ago, it was uh, Valentine's Day. I mean, those days come once in a year. You can't wait to do a PR campaign just around that one day. Otherwise, what right. are you going to do for the rest of the 364? So um, yeah, it definitely involves a lot of that tweaking and, and nudging. So that's what we're here for. And, um, you know, a lot of the specialists that we have start as much as 1500 going up to whether that's 15,000, if that's what your budget is. But of course, uh, the most of the companies that we have, they start with that 1500 to $3,000 per month, because that's kind of a sweet way to test, you know, what's working, right. what's not. 
Uh, and again, like you mentioned, you know, three months is minimum that you would want to see results because it's not as much as you can get a logo designed over a weekend with a lot of uh, designers, but PR works very differently. So it's not the same. You can't apply the same rules. Absolutely. It's that slow build. Mm -hmm. It is. And even I would say, argue for a brand strategy, there's I look at a brand strategy for a brand for the year ahead, and there's some things that we could get started now, and then there's some things that's going to take a little time to build on, right? Exactly. And so it's it's helping founders understand what's the things that we can start checking off the list, and what are some things that they're going to have to be a little bit more patient about, but it's that consistency that will help mm -hmm prepare their brand for landing those bigger opportunities. Yeah. And when you're able to do both at the same time, I think that's also a sweet spot for a founder that you're like, okay, you're, you're getting some instant gratification. You're seeing mm -hmm. numbers on the board and you're also building for the long run and not just yeah. looking at a trend that's here today and gone tomorrow. Um, I could talk to you forever. You have so much insight. I would love to hear what is one thing that you would really – uh, remind a, a founder of an emerging brand, uh, someone who's in those really early stages when it comes to PR, or even maybe just their own way of looking at how they're building their brand, what would be a piece of advice you would love to share with someone? I would love to tell them to just start. I mean, we can, as much as I love that they're watching this, hearing us, you know, share right. these insights, you can do this also all day long. You can switch from one course to another video to another webinar, uh, but at the end of the day, you have to actually get down to doing the thing rather than thinking about doing the thing. So I would just say start because a lot of people put so much emphasis on the start that, you know, it's so intimidating. I don't know where to start. What's the first step? How perfect should it be? I actually think starting is is actually easy in hindsight because it's sticking through that is tougher. Uh, right. Because once you start, there is that little novelty and excitement of doing something new and, you know, maybe trying, trying putting a product together, putting it out there. But then you need to continue doing that. So you need to build those systems that don't make you end up giving up because, uh, you know, that is that is when the real test begins. So start just, you know, take a breath, see, decide that this is the deadline for you and stick to it and then take it from there. Thank you for saying that. I personally needed to hear that advice. I <laughs> We all do. <laughs> yes, I, I needed that reminder this week because I was overthinking some things of putting myself out there in new ways and working on this next stage of growth. So thank you for that. I heard that personally. And after I hang up today and, you know, hit and record, I'm going to definitely take some action that I've been thinking about. So thank I love you it. For that reminder. I love that. I yeah, do. for sure. I really do. So how can people connect with you? How can they connect with um, geeks and experts? What does that look like? Uh, the best way is, yeah, just connect on LinkedIn. I'm very active there. I'm more than happy to connect uh, with somebody who's looking for PR services, but also if it's a founder who just wants to chat and, um, you know, maybe a, be a sounding board or uh, just be a resource, honestly. So LinkedIn would be great. You can, you know, check out the website as uh, geeksandexperts.com. And uh, if there's any further information we can share, I'm happy to do that as well. Incredible. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for sharing all your insight. Thank you. And thank you personally for giving that uh, boost of getting shit done energy today. I really appreciate yeah. it. Great, great. I love it. And I'm sure it's going to be great. So uh, all the best and look forward to staying in touch. Absolutely. Bye, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much for listening.